Hi, I'm Kurt Vincent, editor of the Bladen Journal. Welcome to the Saturday Show. My guest today is Greg Killingsworth, superintendent of Bladen County Schools. Greg, thanks for joining us. I appreciate it. Glad to be here. Uh, first question I wanted to ask you, you're about uh, a little more than halfway through your first year here as superintendent of schools, and you recently gave a uh, State of the Schools report. Can you touch on some of the highlights of that report? Yeah, absolutely, and honored to be here. Uh, I have to tell you, some of the things that we've accomplished is that uh, something we're very proud of, the fact, is that we have reduced the number of suspensions and expulsions uh, of students from school. Uh, we completely redesigned our School of Extended Hope, and uh, the previous school year, there were uh, approximately in the first four months of school, almost 500 suspensions. There were 21 expulsions. Uh, compared to the same time period, this year we have 92 suspensions and one expulsion. Uh, what does that amount to? It amounts to uh, one thing. It means that these kids are in school, uh, they're at the school with the extended hope, but uh, they're not on the street. They're getting uh, an education, and we're doing a lot of this with technology through uh, what I call the, the Novanet classes, virtual high school, and our ed option. And the, the, the uh, students, we have facilitators there that are leading them in uh, instruction. Our first round of test scores for our high school first semester, uh, all our schools uh, uh, went up uh, almost 5% which means that both our high schools are approximately 70% efficient, which meaning seven out of 10 students are at grade level, which is last year we were in the uh, mid to high 50s. Uh, and so that is some growth. When I say mid to high 50s, I'm talking about the end of year composite. So, you know, uh, in some aspects you could look at over a 10% increase. But when you, you put everything together, the very bottom line is, is that academically, we're doing some things. We have put software in, know the, uh, the uh, success maker in our K-8 schools. Uh, we're putting in a new reading program, and students are spending 15, 20 minutes a day on these programs, which helps uh, students review and get things that they possibly missed in class and we're using our technology in that phase. So we've increased technology. Our, uh, we're giving banners and awards to the schools with the best attendance, uh, with the faculty attendance, which affects instruction. And uh, we got a middle, uh, elementary, middle, and high school attendance banners that we give out each month. And because of less uh, students being suspended, our attendance is up. And if attendance, if they're at school, they can learn. Right. Now you mentioned technology in the schools, and I know that's been a big thing for you when you came over here. Uh, how important is that to Blake County Schools, and where does that process stand right now? Well, you know, we're working with Golden Leaf, uh, trying to get some additional funds, and the vision is is that we would like to see a one-to-one -one laptop program. And when we talk one-to-one, -one, we're talking about every student uh, in grades four through twelve to have a laptop at their disposal that they take home and that, uh, that we feel that our students are wired differently. When I was in school, my mom sent me to my room and there was no computer, no radio, uh, no technology, anything, and you were supposed to do one thing at that time. Where our students are digital, uh, 21st century, and so uh, they might have a computer, they could have an iPod, they could uh, be listening to music, working on the computer, doing multitasking. They can do that four to six times faster than we can. And, and you know, the, the world, the playing field uh, in the book, the world is flat, but our playing field has been leveled. The way that we can be uh, surpassed because our children learn differently, technology reaches all the learning styles and our, our students and our, uh, are interested in it. And so our biggest focus has got to be that we're going to change the way that we're doing staff development and how can technology enhance the classroom 
and how can you do hands-on projects and research? Because with a computer, you have a media center. And so all these, you put all these things together, uh, it's going to impact uh, the way that we do business, the way that, uh, that we uh, look at our students and our children and everything. And I see some positive things happening because of us. Uh, we don't want 19th century buildings with 20th century teachers with 21st century students. Okay, that makes sense. Now, we've heard something about 3D education. Can you tell us what that is? Well, uh, one of our, our focuses is going to be STEM. And that's going to be science, technology, uh, uh, the, the math components, okay? And through the BRAC initiative, and we're one of the tier counties with the BRAC initiative, and they have uh, given us some 3D technology for our two high schools. In 3D, you're going to see that our students are going to become the teachers, and they're going to teach our teachers about 3D. Okay? And it's a completely different approach. Uh, our students are going to design the programs that are going to teach. And what you can do with 3D, uh, I go back and I think about when I was in college and I took the course kinesiology, and I made a C in it. But if I had 3D technology, I would have made an A. Because I could have taken the human skull and all the muscles that are in the, the skull, and I could bring it to where I could almost reach out and touch it and manipulate it and, and look at things differently. Because you can tell me, and I'm not always going to remember, but if I see it, I learn a lot more. In 3D technology, you'll be able to take things apart and put things back together and manipulate, and it's more hands-on. As all of this uh, becomes implemented and, and gets closer to reality, how long before parents and teachers and students themselves can start to see uh, positive results from all of this? Well, the number one, what is going to have to take place is that we're going to have to change the way that we do our staff development, how we train our teachers, how we we look at the different approaches. Uh, it's going to, we're going to probably, it's going to take eight to 10 months of uh, a very uh, hard, intense uh, staff development in teaching teachers how to utilize technology to enhance their classroom and hands-on projects and that our students are not going to sit there and listen to 90-minute lectures. Our students are going to have to be a part and hands-on, and you're going to have to transition into many different things. And uh, it's going to be, become, and I see in the future, that we're, the, the teacher is going to become a facilitator, and the students are going to become the teacher. Okay? And in, in, in saying that, uh, we're not far from it right now because we're doing uh, with hands-on projects and everything. Students are uh, going out and developing plans and projects and everything, and they teach it to the class, and students learn from it. And these are hands-on projects. As far as a timeline uh, with the, the uh, projects and everything else, there's a lot of grants, there's a lot of money out there for these types of issues. It's one of these things that we cannot uh, wait two or three years until uh, our economy, economy stabilizes. It's, we'll be further and further behind. Uh, this is something I'm very passionate about that, that I want to uh, go after very, very diligently. And it's going to take a partnership with the community. It's going to take uh, uh, a lot of people coming together and changing the way we do business. But, uh, I, I see in the next two years of every student having uh, a one-to-one -one laptop uh, uh, to take home with them. And I think what you'll see too is you'll see parents uh, that are going to be looking, that haven't had this technology, they're going to be researching jobs, they're going to be taking courses, uh, college courses, or taking a GED, uh, or learning more about technology themselves which is also going to help our economy here in Bladen County. Uh, only good things are going to happen for it, but I would like to see Bladen County. Uh, we visited Green County, and in one year of one-to-one -one laptop, 
They had 24% of their students going to college. In one year, they increased it to 94% going to college. Uh, I visited a school system in Morrisville City Schools, and in two years, they were the 42nd school system in the state, and they went to number eight in the state, and they're looking to be the number one school system uh, and pass Carborough Chapel Hill school system this year. And it's because they're reaching all the students. And this is the way our students want to learn, is through the technology. Not somebody up in front of them telling them. And we've got to change the way that we're doing business. Well, Greg, thank you very much for that good information. I appreciate you stopping by with us. Please join us every Saturday starting at noon with a new edition of the Saturday Show.